Okay, we are at a beautiful wilderness trailhead known as Trent's house. You guys have asked for it, but we're finally doing our what's in our pack videos. So today I'm gonna walk through a four day backpack gear for what I use during elk season. Since I'm so nice and organized, I'm gonna start this off right. All right, well, let's get this clean. All right, now that we got that taken care of, I'm just gonna go through and basically show you the foundation that I go with. It doesn't change, doesn't matter if I'm going for three days or five or seven. So what I run, I run an XO 3500, packs totally capable of running up to six, seven days if you need to. Um, with camera gear and how I like to set up, I really don't like to go more than five or six days with it. I run a 3500 with the lid, dry bag, insertable dry bag for my camp gear. From the 3500, we'll go through my clothing that I take with me. And the, the one variable there is just what it's gonna be. I wear in uh, First Light either corrugate or obsidian pants. Later in September, I'm gonna run the Uncompagre puffy pants from First Light. Early September, not taking those. I run an REI flash pad. I found it's got good insulation, durable, light. The bag I run, Enlightened Equipment Quilt. It's a 20 degree. 950 fill. I've run an extra long and, and wide bag. I always put my camp in a dry bag just for those uh, September rainstorms. And I don't use stuff sacks. I use it just to, everything goes into this one bag and that way it helps mold to the pack how it's gonna be. So you don't have these odd shapes that take up unnecessary volume. The nice thing with down is it, it compresses really good. I run a Jimmy Tart bivy sack. Jimmy Tarp Granite Mountain, um, and this is a fly version. Doesn't take up much weight, a little bit of help on the organization, but the Granite Mountain Tarp is set up for a trekking pole, and I actually use two trekking poles, one for the center ridge, and then I actually use one down by my feet. I'm not packing extra weight, you know, poles and all that, so it's a pretty lightweight system, I think, all said and done. Oh, and this is one of those comfort items. This is a Sea to Summit pillow collapsible, weighs a few ounces, definitely worth the weight in gold to have a good night's sleep. My camp system right here will weigh, it is 4.6 pounds, all set up and done. So that's tight, that's my whole shelter, pad, sleeping bag, everything ready to go. And so how I pack is I shove this down the main body of the 3500. Okay, next up, uh, so I got my main camp, like I said, in the dry bag scenario. The cool thing is you can always pull this out. Uh, we've had a lot of times where we know we're gonna camp in an area, but we, you got a couple hours left of daylight. I'll pull this out, huck it on the ground. It's gonna stay dry out of the elements, everything like that. I run a Jet Boil Soul, a little bit older version. Works awesome. Run a Cedar Summit Spoon. It's the long handle, works good in the, the old mountain house. Small fuel cylinder, you can get about six days fully of burning uh, breakfast and a dinner, you know, and a coffee or top ramen midday. So you can get a lot of, lot of time. Kind of some odds and ends that are always on the inside of my pack in the top lid. Number one, tags, license. I carry a spare chapstick and then on the chapstick I wrap it in Luco tape. Luco tape you cannot have enough of. You never know, a blister is going to flare up, anything like that. Definitely have some Luco tape. I pack a little Princeton Tech flashlight. This has got the dome feature, so I'll hang it in my tent at night so I don't have to burn my headlamp. And then for my headlamp, uh, this last year I switched to a Petzl. This one is the Core Attic. USB rechargeable, you can pull the battery out and it's got a little U micro USB to recharge the battery pack or three AAA batteries. So all this goes, I've got the stash pocket right here where I roll my tag. It's in a safe place, know where it's gonna be. Flashlight, Benchmade Altitude right there. All right here in my stash pocket. Another necessity that I've come to love, baby butt cream. Learned this a few years back. Sometimes you get a little chaffage, works miracles. Highly recommend it. Also with that knife, I carry the Work Sharp. This is their new version. It's called the Pocket Knife Sharpener. You can literally, with that altitude, when taking care of an elk, you can just hit that ceramic six times. So when I kill something, or somebody else does, because that's how it usually rolls, I can go in there, I've got tags, knife, sharpener, all that's right there. In that same pocket, I always carry contractor trash bag, big black trash bag. You can use it as an emergency shelter, poncho, 
if you need to dunk meat in water and get it cooled down, you can put that around it. Always carry a trash bag with you. So these are all items that I'm not going to access that often, but I know exactly where they're at. Super easy with that stash pocket. Into the lids where I'm going to put my headlamp. I've got a DeLorme inReach. Now Garmin makes them. They make a cool new one. It's a mini one. Definitely worthwhile. So this one Bluetooth into my phone. And so my wife knows everything's good to go. We can also, all of us carry one on the team so we can know where each other's at and all that. Another safety reason we also carry radios a lot of times depending on where we're going to be but on a backpack trip so these three items headlamp all that go up here in my lid in another little stash pocket for secure all right next on the list is our water system we've got a ton of questions from people on what do we use and how do we do it it's a really neat system from sawyer it's just called the squeeze filter they're like 35 40 bucks i run a platypus three liter bladder and then I've actually still got an old old camelback hose this system has a quick disconnect on it how you collect the water this is a dirty bag so you fill water that's unfiltered literally you can screw this Sawyer filter on that goes in turn it on got a clip that's a gravity feed system super easy eating lunch or whatever you can just hang this in a tree definitely recommend this system it's been bulletproof no moving parts the only flaw of it's getting clogged in too dirty a water which you just back flush at that point in time my bladder goes down in the bladder compartment here in the pack then I just take these bags roll this up so I have the capability to carry seven liters of water it's got seven liters I can get two full days easily on that just throw these in a bag and then I run this on the outside stretchy pocket on the 35 because it's easy to access know where it's at take my pack off throw it in game bags for us game bags are super important the whole point of us going out there is to bring meat home for our families so we're working on something that's going to help you in this space this is how i carry i carry three quarter bags i vacuum pack them um, keep some waterproof keep some more compact so i've got three quarter bags i'll do two front shoulders back hams back ham and then i've got a hamburger bag meat camp meat bag those always go down in the bottom on the back side of my uh, dry bag down in the bottom of my pack i know where they're at really easy to get to but they're out of the way don't take up too much space sears puffy rain jacket it, long johns i'll go in that dry bag again merino beanie goes in the stash pocket on the side so what i wear in clothing wise i wear the obsidian merino pants or the corrugate guide pants a wick hoodie the 150 hoodie or the fuse 210 top so that's a quarter zip that i wear for uh, merino on top my infamous rope belt that everyone hates but i've been carrying around i use this i don't like a big belt buckle so wear a rope belt trekking pole and i've got a pair of lecky trekking poles aluminum um, also we'll wrap duct tape on the top handle so that's just another sp space to keep it the biggest variable that i have when it comes to hunting this goes with me no matter if it's a three day seven ten day whatever it is like that setup the variable in weight is going to be food i always try to pre-package my food in the daily rations basically try to shoot for that 3,000 calories comes in usually just over a pound 20 ounces somewhere in there shoot for the 150 calorie per ounce mark on the food that you carry i am all about variety first time i went on an out-of-state backpack trip and i had the exact same meal for the exact same day and i hated it um, i usually carry either a mesh bag or a little dry bag just to keep that food easily accessible and organized so i've got my four day bags for meals three nights four days so i run the usually the pro packs and then what i do is i split up a mashed potato every night i'll have about half of a mashed potato and i just mix it right in the mountain house that all goes in there breakfast i will split these in two mornings so i'll have a, a either a scramble or biscuits and gravy that goes oh skittles Taste in the rainbow. This is one thing that I found a couple years ago and I'm super bummed out. They don't make it anymore. Powdered tapatio. Now they make little single serve packets. Trent brings in the family size bottle. And then every day, usually lunchtime, depending on what's going on, some chicken noodle soup, top ramen. That's my food. So we got four days, 7.8 pounds. We will take and like i said usually i like a mesh bag over a dry bag on this stuff because it doesn't matter but like i said before you know with stuff sacks things kind of get awkward with all of my other stuff you can just kind of shove it all down there and it just kind of folds to the mold of what it needs to be you got set up ready to go um 
quick side note. I've been playing around with food, like I said, variety. Our buddy Cody Rich started. It's called Backcountry Fuel Box, and basically it's a monthly box that shows up. It's a wide variety of food. You get whole different mounds of stuff. It's a good way to sample it. Like where I live in Roseburg, there's not that much variety to try. You get it, it shows up at your doorstep, you go for it. Last but not least, another one of those luxury items. I've had this for I don't know how many years. Thermarest Z-Lite pad that I've cut up into I think three different chunks over the years now. I just take and throw that up here in the top as I fold the lid over. It's just nice to have a seat at night if it's wet out. It's always there. So I'll throw this lid down. Set up ready to go. Calls go in the pouch on the side. Stove I always throw in on the side pouch where it's super easy to access. Footwear, I run um, Crispy Summit. Those are on my feet and then gotta get a little croc life in there. So I always take these on the trailhead, throw them in. They work awesome for creek crossings, tender feet. So I always throw those on the pack themselves. Feels heavy. So I got four days worth of food and gear. Um, there's only like a liter worth of water in there. Say 29. We are at 28.6 pounds. Here we go. All right, so pretty much that's it. I'm just under 30 pounds, got four days worth of gear and food. Um, the only thing that's really missing is some camera gear in there. So I feel pretty good about it. Feel like I can hunt with camp on my back and be totally comfortable. Hunt with it all day. Guess I'm ready to go. Blow a bugle, chase some bulls. So